Hi, welcome back to our Road to Steam series, a series in which we'll be creating a game from scratch. Previously on our Who's Dev Diaries, we added Arrow Deflects to our combat sandbox. In today's episode, we set up our first character Ragdoll. Interested to follow the progress of our game? Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get all the latest development updates every week. It's been a long time coming, but today we can officially begin to implement our gore system. However, before tackling any juicy subjects like blood and dismemberment, we need to do some preparation work first. This entails transforming our character models into ragdolls that react to physics. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Here's a ragdoll. A rudimentary toy made from pieces of cloth. At first glance, it might seem like a boring plaything for little girls, but you couldn't be more wrong. Its true potential is revealed when you start throwing it around the place. Like master dancers, they find a way to move and flow gracefully with their environment. This behavior is the reason why we use the term ragdoll in video games, as it perfectly describes how characters fall limply after being killed. In game development, ragdoll movements are simulated by physics engines. They're often used because they can create procedural animations for characters' death sequences. This allows for a more varied and realistic set of animations that don't demand the effort of manually created ones. The best examples of this can be found in games like Red Dead Redemption, where enemy ragdolls are almost lifelike. To create a fully-fledged ragdoll, we need four main components. A skeleton. Rigid bodies. Colliders and a system of constraints. A skeleton is a hierarchy of bones usually created in third-party programs like Blender. It's used to deform character meshes in specific ways when bones are moved around. We created one in our fifth episode to specifically animate the model of our player character. A rigid body is an object that has its motion under the control of a physics engine. In a ragdoll, all the bones of a skeleton are converted into rigid bodies so that they can move realistically, like obeying the laws of gravity. However, we don't want them to go through obstacles as if they were never there. To accomplish this, the use of colliders is necessary. Colliders are invisible shapes that define a collision zone. Each main bone of a skeleton has one associated to it. Usually, a collider's shape is a rough approximation of the mesh that surrounds it. This allows the skeleton to react realistically when it collides with its environment. However, it doesn't prevent it from collapsing upon itself. For this, we need a system of constraints. A ragdoll system of constraints is often made up of character joints that limit a skeleton's range of movement. This means that a bone can only move in a certain way if its associated joint allows it. Its range of movement can be tweaked depending on how you want your ragdoll to react when it receives external forces. That way, we can really simulate the biomechanics of a human body. With that in mind, it's time to implement our own character ragdoll inside Unity. First off, we'll create a playground full of obstacles where we'll be able to test and tweak the behaviors of our puppets. With our test area complete, what's left to do is to set up our human puppet. This can easily be done by using Unity's own ragdoll wizard. This program automatically creates a ragdoll if you feed it all the necessary bones. Lucky for us, we have our character model ready to go just for that purpose. Practical nuke! 
With this atrocity spazzing out all over the place, you might think that the wizard didn't do its job properly. However, looks can be deceiving. This shuffle from hell is caused by a little miscalculation on its part. Something related to the size of the head collider. Wizards are good at doing most of the groundwork for you. However, sometimes a few oddities can remain. This is a common occurrence when using assistant tools like this, as they can't have a perfect answer for every situation. So to fix this, we just need to manually adjust the size of our colliders and tweak the properties of our character joints to have the ragdoll we want. With that done, it's time to let loose and have some fun. Stay tuned for our next episode where we'll add our character ragdolls to the combat sandbox. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe, and we'll see you next week with a new episode of our Road to Steam series. Good.